What's up guys, it's Jughead, just a down-to-earth guy trying to bring you all some down-to-earth content here with another episode of my Let's Watch Hunter Hunter series. Today, we are gonna be watching episode nine called Beware of Prisoners. So last episode, we watched episode eight, which ended up being a cliffhanger for this episode. So I don't wanna talk too much because really episode eight and episode nine should be just one episode. And we are left on the, or at least I was left on the cliffhanger of episode eight, which ended with Gon about to fight Sedukan. I don't remember if that's his name or not, but that's where we left off with episode eight. So now we're gonna be in episode nine, we're gonna be watching Gon fight, the Leorio fight, Kalua fight, or Kurapika fight, whichever of those three, because if Gon wins, then they only need to win two more fights. If he loses, then all three of them have to win. And, or if Gon uh, wins, then either, uh, I don't know how it's gonna plan out. I'm gonna assume that they win because we're on episode nine of like a hundred and something episodes. So it's not really gonna end right here. So just wanted to bring myself back up to speed because I know I was supposed to upload Wednesday, but I did not because I was just busy with assignments and stuff and um, I wasn't able to sit down and record and then edit all in the same day. So I'm doing that now. So hopefully I can be able to edit and upload this the same day that I watch this episode because what I really need to start doing is to just accumulate a whole bunch of episodes together, just the raw footage of me, my reactions. And so I have a back catalog so then I can edit whenever I want because what I'm currently doing right now is I watch one at a time, edit, upload, watch, edit, upload, watch, edit, upload, instead of watch, 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 edit, 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 upload, upload, upload. So I got to figure that out. So without further ado, I'm done talking. I got my notebook, of course, pen, water, episode set up. Let's do this. So in three, two, one, play. That's a new, um, like, panel, like, screen thing with all the little, um, what's it called? Silhouettes of those guys. I'm going to guess those are all the hunters or, like, the, the legends or the different guys. Yeah, and then we're just getting the, we're just getting the recap here. I hate Tonpa, dude. Tonpa is so annoying. So it would be cool to actually see him finally become a hunter. He'd be the shittiest hunter, but it would be a cool storyline to actually see him become a hunter alongside the God Squad. Trick Tower. If you're going to have a prison anywhere, have it be there. You're on top of a cliff on a tower. <sighs> Gon is about to fight. Tonpa's in the corner because he knew he fucking lost. See, and again, who's scarier? The big blue guy or the person laying down in, in the in the dark corner there? This person is creepy. This person's just plain creepy. What's going to happen now? You're not very strong, no. Great. Who the, what the hell are you going to do? It's going to be a mind game. It's going to be a mind game. Uh-oh. What are they going to do? <laughs> going from deathmatch to game. That's nice. What? The hell kind of game does not require mental or physical activity? What you digging out your ass? Oh. Each light a candle at the same time. The one whose candle goes out first is the... What the hell? Okay. Rigged. Rigged. Scam. What? Think opposite. Go for the short. It's going to be like the left or right thing. You would think to choose the short one. But what if it's a it's a trick on top of a trick? Yeah. 
you think you want to go the short one because he thinks you tricked the, the long one, but then you're going to go back to the long one. Oh, man. <laughs> <You've> got... <laughs> I love Leorio and Tonepa's dynamic. God damn it. I keep forgetting to turn my computer on to do not disturb. Why do people have to t t text me when I'm watching? But then when I'm doing nothing, my text and my notifications are dry as the Sahara. Little, little baby core Pika. <laughs> oh, they want you to take your time. They want... Ooh, maybe that's the trick. That's the trick. They want you to waste time on it. They don't give a shit. They're going to burn at the same time, but you're wasting time on, that, on just trying to pick in the first place. Why do you have to be so creepy? Come on, just decide. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Just choose. Just choose, and then just everybody go along with it. Hey, Kalua, that's not that's not nice. Yeah, no more wasting time. Just go with your instincts. Gon's instincts are unmatched. Instincts. Of course, go with the instincts. <laughs> but maybe it's that simple. You don't know. Maybe it's that simple. They're not trying to trick you. The whole idea was just choose. Wow, they actually all decided on the same thing. Let's see what happens here. We're getting no action. We're getting no action. It's literally going to be sitting and watching candles burn. What this guy just eating can eating crackers? Your stupid pineapple ass haircut. Eat the whole cookie. Why do you have to take two bites of it? That's annoying. This is riveting stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point. Great. Oh, shit. Uh oh. Ooh, it doesn't matter which one burns out first, naturally. Who's going to be able to protect it? Who's going to be able to protect the flame? Who is that blue guy, man? He's creeping me out. Okay, stop it. You don't pay attention, your candle will go out. He is a bomber. I feel like hopefully there's not a bomb in that candle. What the hell? What the f Yo, what the hell? That's nice. Great. I knew his bomber pat history characteristics was going to come into play. That's great. You got to attack that person. Gon has the physical strength. He doesn't. Oh, that's nice. You suck. There's nothing fair about this whole thing. Attack that motherfucker. Oh, you suck. 
You suck. Uh, annoying. What happens in Trick Tower stays in Trick Tower. Go with your instincts. Ooh, what's he smiling for? Ooh, hell yeah! Fuck that motherfucker up. Gang! 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 <laughs> oh, yeah! Fuck that guy. W. W. Woo! Not trying to throw up gang signs, but... Catching our first dub. There was no physical or mental activity in there. Just use your uh, super speed. Hell yeah. Kalua is going to be like, hey, the hell? Fuck that guy. Annoying. Oh, great. Oh, God. Member of the Blue Man group. Or... Um, who else is blue? The Blue Dragon from Dragon Tales. Beast from X-Men. Uh... I don't know who else. Blue, but super muscular from Foster's Home of Imaginary Friends. He just got super ripped. I want to see what Korpika is going to do. What the hell? What the fuck is that? What the hell? Is that Frankenstein? Ew. I'm gonna guess those hearts are the amount of people he's killed. Multiple crimes, including fraud and blackmail. Jesus Christ. Gross. Killed 19 people. But it bugged me that 19 is such an uneven number. He's gonna kill one more. This guy is fucking gross. Serial killer. I won't access I won't accept some half assed combat content blood. Guts. Okay. Time to see Ku Oh man, I would have loved to see Kalua. I would have loved to see Kalua being an assassin. <laughs> what is what is Kurapika a member of again? With the with the eyes? I forget. She ain't he ain't shaken with fear. Again, I said she by accident. I don't know why. Leave me alone. Get off my back. One of us dies or admits defeat. Man, Gon got it off easy. <laughs> Deathmatch. Hold candles. Deathmatch. Oh, let's see what happens. God. Okay, so what's with the evil laugh? <laughs> he played... I'm going to guess this guy talks the talk, but doesn't walk the walk. <laughs> I like how he has the normal voice. He has a normal voice, but then plays it up with the with the creepy laugh and everything. Great. He's gonna have weapons. He's gonna have weapons. Something's gonna pop out of his goddamn ear or something. 
I don't know. He has a weapon. <laughs> I want to. This guy is a puss. This guy. This guy is not a fighter. He must have had killed like 19 just completely innocent whatevers. He's not a killer or a fighter. I want to see what's going to happen here. We just get fighting our. Is there going to be a part three to this? There's going to be a part three, isn't there? Jesus Christ. Just get the fighting. <sighs> what the fuck? What the? Is this guy Bane? What the hell? <laughs> exactly, all bark, no bite. Yeah. There's no fear. Kalua respects Gon. Kalua is the assassin and doesn't fear him. Gon just is innocent but still doesn't fear him. I want to. Oh, this is going to be cool as hell. Yo. This is badass. This is badass. Kalua don't give a shit. Gone don't care. This is awesome. How is that a secret weapon? You didn't do anything. What's on his back? A spider. Or a skull? A tattoo of a 12-legged spider. Is this a gang thing? Ooh! Is it the, uh, is it the group that killed? Oh! Mm, the Phantom Troop! The people that killed Kurapika's family and entire gang. Oh shit. Oh shit. That's the screen in the beginning of the episode of all those people. The Phantom Troop, he's a member of them. Kurapika's about to get the uh, the eyes. The eyes. Oh shit. Oh damn. The steel implanted in my body? Jesus Christ. What? Except for her. Except for Motherfucker! Except for him. Get those red eyes. Get those red eyes. Get them red eyes out. Scare the shit out of this guy. Oh shit. Oh shit. He thinks that all of those gang members are gone. Oh, this is about to be badass. Oh shit. Oh, shit. What the fuck? What the fuck, dude? <laughs> I love how Kalua just doesn't give a fuck. A genuine Fenton True as a member number inscribed inside. Two. They don't bother telling the number of how many they've killed. So you're a phony. Three. You would have known about the eyes. 
Oh, okay. Whoa. Dude. Hell yeah. Fuck. Yes. The God Squad is in full fucking force, dude. God Squad. Kalua don't care. Kalua's seen some shit. Dude. Hell yes. Okay, so Leorio's gonna lose, and Kalua's gonna win. That's what's gonna happen here. Let's turn that one into a two. Let's turn that one into a two. Kurapika is a badass. What a phony. So he's is he not able to control his power? God damn it. What's he called? Let me go back in my notes. This is why I have notes. Um, the Kurta clan. Yeah. Wait. What did he say? I was looking down at my notebook. Ooh, so even when you see a real spider, he goes into that weird state. Okay. The rage. We love the rage. Yeah, I'd say so too. <laughs> Look at Tonpa. Shit in his pants. Maj Majitani. Yeah, what a what a loser. Oh, so he's a fraud. Some botched plastic surgery. Oh God. He's gonna. F this person's gonna face Leorio, and Leorio's gonna lose, and then it's gonna be all up to Kurapika facing the person in the in the corner. Yep. This episode's gonna end before this. So part three is going to be Leorio and Kalua. Leorio is going to lose. That's my bet. Okay, let's discuss. I actually don't have a lot of notes for this episode. I think just because it was like so straightforward that it's not like a lot to interpret. Um, I literally only have like one and a half pages worth of notes, which is weird because that's by far the shortest amount of notes I've had. But maybe it's just, I don't know, I just naturally didn't really need to uh, write much down because it was like, I don't know. Again, because now we're getting a part three to this episode. If it was one episode and they condensed it all into one, I'd have like eight pages worth of notes, but I don't. So um, I think it was because like the first couple minutes of it was really just repeating what happened in the previous episode so it's still in our minds then because the first art cliffhanger ended with us knowing okay gone's gonna fight sidokan and we gonna get that again so then it naturally leads up into okay gone is now facing sidokan they're standing together and they have to decide what they're going to be doing and sidokan says i'm not much of a fighter i don't have any physical capabilities so i don't really want to actually do anything physical and gone is saying well okay, I can fight physically, but I'm not the best. I don't like mental uh, activities. Um, again, when you're like a little kid and you're very and stuff like that, he doesn't want to do any of the mental stuff. So they're like, okay, we won't do any of that. We'll do something that doesn't take any physical or mental activity to do. And then it just ends up being these mind games of just Sitikon says, okay, here's two candles short one and a long one and we're just going to stand here and whoever's candle burns out first loses and so you're like oh well there's a short candle and a long candle i want to take the long candle then it turned into this whole mind game thing because you're in trick tower and the whole point is to waste time and everything so you're going to be like okay the long candle is going to burn out the longest but someone who's trying to trick you would know that you're thinking that so they're going to want to they're going to make 
they're going to mess up the long one to burn faster. So you actually want to turn the short one. But again, it's trick tower. So they're going to know that you're thinking that the trick is a trick. So they're going to actually trick the short one because you're going to go for the short one instead of the long one. And then it's just a constant feedback loop in your head and you have no idea what to choose, which is still there winning because then you're wasting time trying to decide instead of just deciding. And time is literally of the essence because you have to do this in under 72 hours. And if you're going to waste an hour or so or any amount of time just not even being able to make a decision that you're still losing at that point. So even uh, Cora Pico was like, okay, fuck it. Gone, you decide, and we're going to vote whatever. Because really at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Who knows what could be messed up? Just roll with the punches. So Gone decides just simply because, again, he's not the smartest uh person there he's not the sharpest tool in the shed he's like i'll go with the long one because the long one's obviously gonna burn longer and so he turn he gets the long one and then you realize this is dumb um he was tricked regardless seru khan is a little asshole um find out that gone's candle just starts burning profusely because it was oil oil dipped and so and Sidhu Khan had two, f two extra candles hiding in his pockets so that regardless of whatever candle uh, Gon chose, he was going to get the one that's going to burn faster. Um, so that was just dumb. You're just getting tricked out of ways you can't even really even think of being tricked, which I guess is the whole point of Trick Tower. But it ends up being in his favor because... They're in the middle of this big ass platform in the middle of the tower. There's this giant ass draft going up that like threatens to blow out the candle. And the entire point is whoever's candle bl blows out first loses. And it doesn't matter how it blows out. It could blow out. It could go out as in your candle burned all the way. It blew out naturally. Somebody blew it out. You weren't paying attention. Anything. So Gon's candle is burning so profusely that a flint, a little breeze is not going to put it out. So Gon is like, okay, I'm just going to set this set this thing down. And Gon being so fast, nobody nobody can keep up with his quickness. Even the um, chairman in the previous episodes, uh, when he when the chairman and Gon were fighting, was even impressed by his speed. And Kalua is impressed by his speed. And so is Hizoka. So he's like super fast. It's all the instinctual and like he's just one with himself and nature and the universe and shit like that. He's just super fast. So he rushed Sedukan and Sedukan didn't have any time to react. It was just like pew, right in front of Sedukan and just whoosh, blew out his candle and he won. Because there were no – you have to establish the rules. There was no physical activity there that Sedukan didn't have to do any physical activity See, Gon was fine with physical activity. Sedukan didn't want to do it. Where Sedukan was fine with the mental uh, activity and Gon wasn't. So Gon went with his own strength and used his lightning fast speed to just run over to Sedukan really quick and just blow out his candle and they won. So now it was tied 1-1. And the next match ends up being Kurapika decides to go versus the blue man group mystery guy big ass tall guy that i was like who the hell is this guy ends up being a guy named majtani who is this weird ass frankenstein looking motherfucker just completely botched just eye is messed up teeth are messed up ear is messed up this thing coming out of his other ear um and he proposes and Gon gone got the uh, <laughs> Gon lucked out where Tonpa gets deathmatch uh, holding candles till one burns out and then we get deathmatch again except the difference between this one and the Tonpa one is this guy says deathmatch one must die or give up to win so it's not really a deathmatch whereas the first one was we're not ending this until you die until one of us is dead so Korpika kind of lucked out a little bit there but you can't you so it was a deathmatch Except you can't you 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 must die or give up, and it can only be fists. You can't use your weapons, so Kurapika had to throw away his weapons. And you kind of just quickly learn that Majtani is this scary looking dude, huge buff guy, except he's just a he's an all talk, no walk, bark but no bite guy 
especially compared to Korpika. Mastani is bragging like how muscular he is. He's killed 19 people. He wants to make it 20. Um, just saying all these things to intimidate Korpika. And Korpika is just standing there like, okay, I'm fine. Whenever you want to establish the rules, whenever you want to say go, let's do it. Because Korpika is a walk the walk guy. Not a. Korpika doesn't need to talk, just show it in action. Because Korpika is also disciplined because he's in the Kurta clan. He has like this lifestyle. He comes from this this very disciplined background. Korpika is the like the most wise and the most, I don't know, philosophical or like more like the most knowledgeable wisdom wise one of the God Squad, in my opinion, because he comes from the Kurta clan like this. I don't know, like I don't know how you would describe it as like all these it's like, I don't know how to describe it, but just like a very cultish, like a gang that's just very, like, I don't know how you describe it, but just very disciplined and knows what he's about. And so compare Majtani versus Kurapika, you could just see the contrast between them. And then, so Majtani attacks him in just blows through the ground with his fist and we realize this guy's a mix between the hulk being so buff wolverine because his skeleton is made out of steel and that's why his fist was able to punch through the goddamn ground and beast from x-men 2 because he's he's fucking blue and he turns around and shows his other secret which is the spider tattoo on his back which Immediately, I was like, oh, shit. That's what that screen was in the beginning of the episode, showing those silhouettes of people that I've, I think I've seen before but haven't. And I quickly related the fact that, holy shit, um, who else would poor Pika be fighting than a phantom troop person? So I was like half thinking, oh, my God, he's going to be fighting a phantom troop person. And then just slowly I was like, this person cannot be Phantom Troop because Phantom Troop is another like clan, gang, like disciplined lifestyle where um, I'll get into that of where I knew myself. But so Korpika, he, he sees the tattoo, the spider tattoo, hears the words Phantom Troop and just goes – in the eyes that was just such a cool shot of where i immediately knew holy shit some shit's about to go down where kurapika's face was facing down the hair was blocking the eyes and then just goes up and you see the the scarlet eye show and um mashtani is like what the hell is going on and just kurapika disappears in front of mashtani's eyes and then just reappears to fucking uppercut this motherfucker right in the jaw and just knock his ass out into the ground and finally we got some action of like learning we're, we're learning so much about the characters even more so in their care like okay we learned Kalua is an assassin and like this dangerous person knows his family knows that he's like not really human um that um we saw more of we always see more of Gon's physical capabilities. Now we got we knew from the first episode that Kurapika was part of the Kurta clan and has the scarlet eyes and is out to find the Phantom Troop to avenge the death of all of their his clan members because he's the only remaining member alive of the Kurta clan. And we finally got action to see Kurapika's potential and his powers and his capabilities and everything was badass. So now he, I don't know, I don't think Majtani died um, because uh, Korpika threatened to kill him. And these are the three reasons that Korpika knew that, well, not three reasons, but the, he said three things to Majtani after he defeated him. So we're up to one right now. He says, he said, real Phantom Troop has the number um, has a number tattooed within the spider of like the member number tattooed inside the spider and his tattoo didn't have it the 12 legged spider tattoo is the mark of a phantom troop but a real phantom troop member would have their member number tattooed or engraved or anything 
or branded inside the spider and he didn't so that's when he well that's when Corpica knew that he was a phony which is almost would Corpica be more mad would be more upset facing a facing a phantom troop member or facing a phony fake fraud phantom troop member like what is more insulting one is like pure anger and then one is more insult like you're pretending to be the group that killed all of my people so that was the first reason and then Corpica then says you have you have tattoos showing how many people you've killed the phantom troop would not do that they're they've killed a person in the phantom troop would have killed too many people to be able to count let alone tattoo which is true and then he also mentions do not mention phantom troop to him again or he will kill mashtani so those are the two, the first two were the reasons why Korpika knew that mashtani was being fake but then it was also the fact of me knowing that my two reasons were a real member of the phantom troop i think would be as disciplined and as wise and as serious as Kurapika is in his demeanor and his character as in a real member of the phantom troop would not be bragging about all the people he's killed or being all talk and no walk and stuff like that like bragging being so braggadocious and cocky i don't think a phantom troop member would be like that and when Kurapika's eyes went scarlet a real phantom troop member would know that a person with scarlet eyes is a member of the Kurta clan and it would not be like, is something wrong with you? He would know right away that that's a member of the Kurta clan because the phantom troop members killed every member of the scarlet of the Kurta clan for their scarlet eyes because they're one of the most um, beloved, like sought after colors in the entire world. So kind of gave it away right there. So that was really cool to see. Now, so we're up to one. So the prisoners are have their backs up against the wall because they it has to be by majority rule. So each either side has to win three wins to win by majority rule. So now the prisoners have to go undefeated, and either Leorio or Kalua have to win. And now Leorio's going up and against the this short person, like with this weird voice, looks like a um damn it i'm such a star wars fan and i can't remember what the what their name is what their names are um the little hooded people in, on tatooine um in star wars I forget what their names are but so i have a feeling leorio is gonna lose because in this whole scenario right now you have to be ruthless like either ruthless as in death match and i just don't think that leorio would have that in him to do it like okay tonepa quit and Korapika is an actual fighter clan member as close to an assassin or like whatever you're going to be like stone cold killer vigilante um fugitive mercenary that you're going to get so has no problem killing a person uh doing what must be done business is business like has no pro has the skills has the knowledge to just do what has to be done Leorio is Leorio wants to save people. We learn that from his backstory of the reason he wants to be in the whole competition in the first place is so he has a lot of money to be able to save people from diseases and uh, protect people and be there for people and be a doctor. So he want he doesn't. I don't think Leorio is going to want to be a person to have to kill someone and doesn't have the fighting skills. Um, he's very emotionally based too. So you're, or because the rational one, um, Leorio is the emotional one. His emotions might get the best of him. And I just don't think he's as good a fighter. So, and I don't think they would just leave out Kalua to not have to do anything. I think it would be a good ego check or a good character development for Leorio to lose, to kind of be in the same boat as Tonpa. Cause he looked down on Tonpa for just giving up, but he still lost and Leorio, even trying his best, lost as well. Or it ends up being the fact that Leorio couldn't go through with what had to be done, or he just lost fair and square, and he and he has to realize that he's not as good as Gon or Kalua or Korapika, that he's not the fighter that he thinks he is. So I think Leorio is going to lose um, because Gon used his instincts and his wit and his just superhuman speed to win. 
Um, Orpika is like used his Kurta clan capabilities. Leorio is going to lose so that we can then see Kalua because I don't think they would just have Kalua not do anything in this entire thing. Having the fifth prisoner just sitting in the corner. I think this is that's where they're going to show Leorio lose as an ego check to show some humility for him. And then everybody's going to realize who the fuck Kalua is. Kalua's because Kalua is still like the least popular member of the of the like the squad of Kalua kind of just came in because he was friends with Gon already. He's not really interacting or friends with Orapika and Leorio. It's kind of like there are the God Squad because there's four of them, but they're not the God Squad as in they're like friends and in this together. And I think they're going to see Kalua being the assassin. They're going to learn about his secret because now Kalua is the only one with like their background that nobody knows about because he we we learned that he's an assassin and like super skillful like okay go knows that his family is, is an assassin but it's not that everybody knows everybody knows about leorio's story about Korapika's story about gone's story about tonepa's story but nobody knows kralua so i think this next episode we're going to be seeing leorio lose and then kalua showing everybody what the fuck he's capable of and then the episode's going to be over and then we're going to s- it's going to be a three-parter. We're on a cliffhanger again. We're getting into the part three, and then they're going to win. And I wish we were able to see what Hizoka is doing and like if they, if he's by himself or if, they're, if they all have to work as groups or whatever. That would just be interesting to see. Like Our group, our God Squad, has the majority rule test, like what other ones there are, but I don't think we're going to get that. But I'm looking forward to see how Leorio and Kalua's whole part three turns out um yeah that's again i only had one page of notes i'm going to end my discussion here if you found this episode entertaining leaving a like to let me know is awesome and better yet if you want to keep up with all future content from me be sure to subscribe to stay in the loop on all of my uploads especially this let's watch hunter hunter series obviously that's why you're here also keep the conversation going down in the comments section below like you've been doing so i can connect to you as my audience some more because that's the most important thing to me anything you want to ask share simply talk about leave it down below and i'm going to get back to you and be sure to follow me on all of my social medias, Twitter, or Instagram, to keep the conversation going even more or to just connect to me on a more personal side. Having said that, and with that said, so long, farewell, until next time, this is Jughead. Thank you, and have a good one.